So I decided to create this episode because over the last couple of weeks, I have been in a lot of conversations with people who have kind of been in my audience for a period of months or years. And a lot of the time what happens is, you know, people follow me for a long time, then they end up getting into one of my coaching programs. But a lot of people follow me for a long time and continue to follow, right? And they don't necessarily jump into a program, which is totally, totally fine. But I I really love being interactive with my audience, and I'm so appreciative of the fact that you're here listening to this podcast and that people care about what I have to say for whatever reason, and I certainly never take that for granted, and I've been really diligent over the years about following back up with people, right? So maybe we were having a DM conversation or they you know, commented on like a live training or something like that. And I reach out to them or they reach out to me and they start to kind of share what their vision, what their goals are and that kind of thing. And regardless of whether they choose to work with me in that moment, within the next couple of months or even ever, I do like to maintain relationships with people, right? And that is a big part of the nurture process like you've heard me talk about here before. And I genuinely care and I'm genuinely curious about people in my audience, right? But one of the things that has always kind of struck me, but particularly more recently, just because I've been having so many of these kind of like follow-up touch-based conversations is the lack of results, right? So I'll talk to people. I actually was in a lot of conversations with a bunch of people that I connected with like December, January of like December, 2020, January, 2021. And I'm recording this in July of 2021. So it's been about seven months since I connected with a lot of those people. And the overwhelming theme, like 100%, is that the people who I connected with and didn't really move forward into action, and they said, you know, oh, maybe I'll try it on my own, or I, you know, I'm not ready yet, or whatever, like they haven't moved forward at all in their business. And that's been the case with 100%. And we're talking several dozen people. So I would estimate like probably 40 to 50 people that I've been back in touch with. And that's the reality, right? That's what tends to happen when we are not in a place to create results. And I want to tell you what that place is. So results come from making a decision that you are going to create the results. Results start with the decision that you make and from the energy from which you make that decision. And 95% of coaches are going to make decisions from the energy of fear. And I have this saying that fear-based decisions yield fear-based results. And those are never the type of results you're looking for. So they'll think to themselves, oh, well, you know, I'm just going to try it on my own. I don't need to pay money to have help in my business. Or they will let imposter syndrome and a lot of these like mindset issues around worthiness and ability to get their clients results and things like that get in the way. Or they'll convince themselves that there are some life circumstances that are preventing them from going all in at that time. And none of those things are ever reality. They're never true, but we can make them feel true because we're scared and we are not yet in decision. Because when you decide you are going to create results in your business and you make that decision from a place of desire rather than fear, that's when everything becomes possible. Fear-based decisions do not create greatness. They don't create tons of impact and they don't create any money. When you make decisions from fear, you do not make money, right? And money, of course, is the measure of success in a business. What fear-based decisions do is they keep you stuck They disempower you and they steal your confidence, making it less likely that you will ever move forward. And it just sets you further and further behind. And fear-based decisions pretty much guarantee that you are never going to fulfill the dreams that you have. And, you know, if you kind of look at humans in general, most people operate from fear. So think about how many people stay in situations that make them unhappy because they're too afraid of the unknown. So people want to start a business, but they never do because they're afraid that they'll fail. So they stay in a job that makes them miserable. They are miserable in their relationship or their marriage, but they're so afraid of being alone or 
just the unknown in general, that they stay. And so we can see that in so many different aspects of life that we operate from a place of fear. So often, I think a lot of that is human nature. It's probably got to do something with like our, you know, survival mechanisms. But if you want to be an incredible business owner, an incredible coach who makes amazing money and has so much impact, you can't operate from fear and you truly have to be in decision about what it is that you want to create. And it's especially true for online coaches, online health and fitness coaches that want to build a business. And a lot of the fear often comes around to self-doubt, again, imposter syndrome, and really around investing in themselves, right? I always think that when coaches tell me they can't afford a program, and I'm not just talking about working with me, just in general, that they can't afford to invest in themselves, it's never about the money, right? Because if they knew for a fact that they were going to make a hundred thousand dollars in the next six months, based on whether or not they invested in themselves, if they knew that was to be true, no matter what they would find the money, right? You would figure it out no matter what, whether the investment was 5,000 or $10,000 and you were guaranteed with no doubt to make a hundred thousand dollars in the next six months, you would find the money, right? But the problem that so many coaches face that keeps them really stuck is they just assume and they make decisions from a place of it's not going to work and that's not possible for me. Because of course, why would you invest in yourself if you know you're there's no there's no return coming? And that makes sense. So maybe think about it. If you have been afraid to pull the trigger on investing in yourself, or you've said something like, I can't afford it, I don't have the money, or whatever. What if you were guaranteed to double, triple, quadruple that investment? You knew without a doubt that was going to happen. And of course, this is hypothetical because there's no guarantees in life or in business, but you would of course figure it out. You would of course make that decision. So when you're making decisions about investing in yourself and building your business and creating results, make sure that you're asking yourself the right questions. What if the dream is possible? What if I could create this over the next six, 12 months, then what decision would I make? Stop asking yourself questions as if you are going to fail, right? That's a huge, huge thing. And because so many coaches have a lot of fear around things like investing in themselves and they believe their own thoughts around it being unaffordable or whatever, not having the money, what ends up happening is most coaches, 95% take a really nice long jog on the hamster wheel, right? They get frustrated by the lack of results in their business. Sometimes they try to kind of like convince themselves. And this is what fitness coaching clients do, by the way, they try to convince themselves they'll figure it out on their own, but they don't really go anywhere. They start to go into overwhelm. And then finally, when they have just had it, they bite the bullet and do what they needed to do all along with getting support, right? So a lot of the people who work with me have been spinning their wheels for months or years. And I've even had some people for decades, like trying to figure out business building. Right. And all of a sudden it's kind of like, they're like, okay, I'm ready to get out of the struggle. This decision is really uncomfortable for me to make, but let's do it. Right. And as I kind of describe that, I want you to also know that that is very much what is likely going on for the type of clients that you are trying to attract as well. There's a lot of overlap with the mindset and the thoughts that, uh, but in really both like the business business side of coaching and the health and fitness side of coaching. So that is likely coming up for your clients as well. So again, when you make decisions from a place of fear, you're assuming that you're going to fail because if you knew you would succeed, you would never make that fear-based decision. You would never retreat. You would always do the scary thing. So again, I know for a fact when someone inquires with me and they don't invest in themselves, it's because they're assuming failure. Same thing for fitness and health coaching clients who don't buy, right? Because why would anyone want to just throw more money in the garbage if they've already failed before? or if they don't believe success is possible for them. And I know like with the clients that I work with, with my market, it's never about money. It's always the fear that they can't be successful. And, you know, sometimes in the beginning, again, both in business and in health and fitness coaching, people think that, you know, they're kind of naive enough to think that they can just figure it out on their own, right? Someone who needs to lose 50 pounds is not going to figure it out on their own. Someone who's never built a successful 
online coaching business before is not going to figure it out on their own. But usually in, you know, either case, they realize that it doesn't really happen. Or like in the case of business, they realize they can't repeat, even if they had initial success in the beginning, they realize they can't repeat it over time and, or they can't scale. And same thing, like the client who, you know, gets themselves to lose the first 10 pounds is typically going to rebound without further coaching support and accountability. We just know this is true. And a lot of times in the beginning, so, you know, thinking about your client base, people do convince themselves that they can figure it out on their own. We know as coaches that they can't. So that's that's part of the reason that uh, being indecision about the results you're creating, not making decisions from fear is so, so, so important. So when you're asking, when you're making scary decisions, you want to make sure that you're asking yourself helpful questions. Okay. So 95% of people are going to ask themselves this question when they're, when they're making decisions, what if it doesn't work, but rather ask yourself, what if it does? What if all of this is possible? And if we are connected on social media, there's obviously a lot more client interviews that I have, but if you were listening to the podcast, I interviewed three of my coaching clients recently, Brie, Danielle, and Jenny. And Brie's story is going from two to 3K a month online to a $40,000 a month in less than two years. Jenny's story is going from averaging $36,000 a year to one year later, hitting 400,000 annual target. And Danielle's story is going from inconsistent $7,000 months to $30,000 months in less than a year, right? And so you hear stories like that. And if your thought is, well, good for them, <laughs> right? That's not my story or I can't do that, right? Well, why not? Okay. I think about these amazing clients that I work with and what if they had asked themselves the wrong question? What if they had been so afraid of failure that they'd never moved themselves forward, that they didn't become decisive around what it was they wanted to create? What would their lives and their stories look like? And I'm so grateful they went another direction. So when you hear stories like that, I don't want you to think to yourself, oh, good for them. <laughs> I want you to ask yourself, why not me, right? Because the truth is that creating any result in your business is possible. And it starts with making a powerful decision about what you want to create, how you want to live, how you want to impact, and then backing that decision with action. Too many coaches have misalignments between their actions and their values. So they don't put their money where their mouth is, so to speak, right? So they say they want a successful business, but then they make every decision from a place of fear. They don't go live on social media because they're scared. They don't tell people what they do or make offers because they're scared of rejection. They don't invest themselves because they in themselves because they think they're going to fail. They don't take the necessary required daily, weekly, monthly, and quarterly action to get the results that they say they value. And when you make decisions from fear and when you do not align your actions with your value, your actions show and reflect way better what your actual values are. So if you're not doing the things necessary to build and grow business, your actions, you can say that your value is a business all day long, but your actions show that your value is actually your comfort zone, not a wildly successful business, right? It's just like when people say they want to lose weight and that's their top value, but they continue to eat junk food and make excuses about why they can't work out right? That's a huge misalignment because our actions speak our values a lot more than our mouths do, right? The misalignment between actions and values are what kill dreams and prevent success and results. And I know for a fact that health and fitness coaches are great at coaching their clients through aligning actions and values, but they often deeply struggle with creating that alignment for themselves. And so I really want to challenge you right now to think to yourself, what am I saying is my top value around my business? And are my actions perfectly aligned with that value? 
because that's what it takes, right? And creating results starts with making a decision, getting clear on your values and taking that aligned action. Creating results does not come from spinning your wheels and getting on lots of, you know, free trainings, a hundred webinars, following all kinds of coaches. It doesn't come from sitting in seeking clarity mode. I'm using air quotes. <laughs> I hear that all the time, right? Like I'm just seeking clarity or I'll hear from people six months later, they're like still trying to figure out who their soulmate client is. And I'm like, oh my gosh, no, you can't do that. Right. You can't seek clarity for months on end. You can't do indefinite research. Results come from making a decision and taking action that is in complete alignment to what you have decided to create. I did not create a multi-million dollar business from fear-based decisions or inaction. And my clients don't scale to six figures in an average of three to six months from those things either. So I want to encourage you today to decide what results you're creating based on your values, get support, and then take action until the results you realize then take action until the results you desire are realized and that dream comes to fruition and expands. And of course, a big part of your strategy, once you have decided what results you're going to create, if that's business growth, a big part of your strategy will involve content creation. And I know that's a lot and I know it can be overwhelming. And I know sometimes you're like, I just have no idea what the heck to write about. So if that's you, I want to encourage you to jump over to accontentguide.com and grab my fast content creation formula. It's really designed to help you outline an entire month's worth of content in about 30 minutes to an hour each month. So you're never running out of content ideas. And so you can focus on building and growing your business.